Guys, I don't know if you can make that out. It's got some scratching on the top. It says Fubar. And this is from a viewer. His name is uh, Vince. I don't want to give away his last name, but he says this is a <laughs> craptacular lock. He says <laughs> he's uh, pinned it with some alien tech. He has managed to get it open once or twice, he says, by luck. And he says he'd like to see if we can get it open. He says, I picked it and raked the crap out of it. He says it does work. He did give me the key. And there's what you're bidding looks like. So pretty good bidding, even for a, a quick set. Uh, said he sent it our way, see how fast we could get it open, and then he'd like to hear, once we get it open and get it gutted, uh, any advice you guys have to make it better to improve it. It looks like it's held together with some kind of friction bandage, so I'm not going to even pull that off. I'm just going to find the clamp, clamp it up. Let's see if we can get this thing picked. All right, guys, that's going to hold it. Um, here's what the key looks like again. It does work beautifully, no dragging whatsoever. And in fact, the whole core kind of flops around inside of there just a little bit. I'm going to use top of the keyway. It is, after all, a quick set. There's plenty of room. You can see we've got some real weirdness in there, though. Um, maybe not even a standard pin. All right, because there's plenty of room in this keyway, I'm going to use a medium hook. And this is the one from the Praxis Kit. It's 23 thousandths. I want to use the widest possible pick that I can fit into the keyway. I'm counting five pins, and they're all about the same tension, so don't have to deal with that. All right, let's see if we can get this thing picked. All the way in, very light tension. It is, after all, a challenge lock, so I'm betting we have some serrations. Okay, that was pin three. We got a little turn on the core there. I'm back on pin three. No, everybody else is still springy, so I'm going to give them another little click. I got one more click out of it. Okay, now I'm on four. And I don't think he's going anywhere. Okay, I touched three again, and I got a little bit more turn on the core. Very light tension here. I got a little bit of feedback on pin number one. Can rotation. Got a spool element to him. I think we got him. Got a good fault set going. And I'm looking for some kind of ro counter rotation. And I got a little bit there on pin two. You can just barely see that thing turning. Get on there. Okay, he's unwinding pretty good now. Something's going to drop. And there we go. All right, um, we definitely got some serrations in there, and we got some spool elements in there. So let's see what Vince has inside of this thing. I'm still not going to take the bandage off. I'm just going to, I do have a key, so I can lock him back up and just pop this clip off. Should be pretty easy to do because he's indexed on the bottom with that little center, so it makes it a little easier for me. All right, get the board up here, and let's see what Vince put inside of this thing. Okay, nothing weird right off the bat. I'm looking at pin number two there, and he's kind of flat on the top, and the others are kind of rounded. Whenever you have rounded pins like that, sometimes it's a little easier to rake a lock, but I didn't rake this one, so I don't know if it really played into it that much. Okay, number two is nothing but a standard spool pin. Commercial spool, it was not a key pin, so that explains the flat edge on both the key side and the top. The rest of these look like they're standards. And that should be it, five of them. And I'm looking at three threaded chambers, number one, number three, number four, and I see nothing in pin five or pin, or a chamber five or chamber two. Let's see what Vince hit up here. Let's see if we can find some tweezers. Well, they were here a second ago. There we go. Okay, we got a homemade, got a spool element to it, so there was that counter rotation we were experiencing. Very narrow center band on him. Let me go ahead and remove the spring. 
I don't think that's a stock spring. That looks like stainless steel. Okay, another, looks like a, this is a commercial spool, unlike the, the first one. And another non-standard stainless steel spring. These are good springs, Vince. I'm seeing some threaded elements in there. Here's a weird one. It looks like, almost like a spool, but it's just filed on two sides. Let me get that out of my hand there so you guys can kind of see. Got an angled groove cut in both sides of that little guy. That's some weirdness. And that spring doesn't want to show his face. We're just going to leave him for now. Well, maybe not. There he is sticking out. See, that one's a little different. He was kind of boogered up on the end, too. I didn't do that. That was the part that was shoved down inside of the chamber. So maybe you got bent when you installed it or put this top part on. Okay, number four. There is a standard pin. And we have a different spring. And the last... Oh, goodness. Shot out. Got... Now this is an odd one. Let me uh, let me go ahead and put all this down and show you this pin. I have never seen anything like this. From the sides, there's nothing to it. But when you look at the top, we've got some slots cut down. Come on, focus for me. Some slots cut down the link. I really, Vince, I, I really don't think this would come much into play, to be honest with you. And trying to make it look like a Medico pin. And there's the stainless steel pin for number five. Uh, on the top, what I'm seeing are, I'm going to go ahead and pull this bandage off real quick. Because it'll be easier to see what you did to the chambers if we look from the top side. If I can do this without gouging in my hand. Here we go. So now you can see that we got some threaded chambers in there. Again, uh, two, three, and five. And... Two, the only one that matches up with the core is three, but two and five were not threaded in the core, but two and five were threaded in the Bible or in the body. So that, that's a good matchup as well, I got to say. Pretty good job. I don't know why I was able to get this thing picked so quickly. These vertical uh, slots, I'm not sure. Maybe you guys have some ideas about how these might come into play, but I just don't see it. So anyway, there's what you're looking at, guys. All standards on the bottom except for number two, which was a stock spool. Number one is a homemade spool with just a tiny waistband there. We had a stock spool, so double st stock spool in two. We had those diagonal cuts on both sides of number three. Number four is stock, and number five had those vertical slots down, I think it was down three sides. And for the terms of the pins, they're all pretty much the same, or the springs are all pretty much the same. So there you go. If you got some suggestions on how Vince can make this better, please put them in the comments and let them know. Vince, thanks for the lock. Everybody else, stay safe, stay legal. Mm -hmm.